The entire internet went down. AMD has some big updates for us, maybe all at the same time. And Jensen throws some shade towards AMD's phone ray tracing. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting off with some updates to the next generation of AMD CPUs and GPUs. This is coming from a well-known leaker who has previously divulged AMD's internal roadmaps to us before. And this time, the juicy bit of details is that it looks like our DNA 3 and Zen 4 should launch around the same time of next year, which unfortunately will be Q4 of 2022. So we have to wait over 12 months in order to get the next generation of everything that we're looking forward to. But that also means that we have time for the stock supply issues to get better so that you have enough time to buy everything before the next thing's released, maybe. Also in this leak is the pure personal guess that Navi 33 will perform at one and a half times Navi 21, which is something that we've heard from previous leaks before, that the high-end current RDNA 2 card will be equivalent to the mid-tier card of the next generation, and it seems like it'd be even better according to this guess by this leaker. And part of that is because we're expecting AMD to use multi-chip modules to make it so that these GPUs are double the performance of the current ones. And then when you add in things such as the IPC increase from the new architecture, you get a much faster card overall. This leaker also indicated that we might get a Zen 3 XT refresh at some point in order to kind of alleviate the delay that we're gonna have until the next generation of Zen 4 and RDNA 3 in Q4 of next year. Does this bum you out? Are you okay with these releases being delayed until late next year so that you do have time to get your hands on current generation cards? Or are you frustrated because you'd rather see new things come out at the same cadence and be more down the line of future GPU progression? Let me know down below in the comments. But staying up to date on Zen 4, we've had plenty of leaks in the past couple of weeks of what these things are supposed to look like. And now there is a redesign of the render of the Raphael CPU that we're expecting with now open capacity capacitors being on the outside of the integrated heat spreader as you can see here and all this means is that it's slightly different and AMD is gonna do what they technically need to in order to get these CPUs to work in their next generation chips. So if it looks like that, that's great. If it doesn't, I'm not gonna sweat my brow over it. And TSMC is not gonna sweat their brow over making some production deadlines when it comes to four nanometer chip production because they're ahead by a full quarter, which is good news? Normally when this type of stuff happens, we get Intel's delayed their 10 nanometers by 85 years, but no, TSMC is just moving ahead. They'll be able to start test production of four nanometers in Q3 of this year instead of Q4, and they're just doing well. Good tech news, everybody. Yeah! Also more good tech news, NVM Express has announced its NVMe 2.0 specification, which for a lot of just normal consumer stuff doesn't really matter. The one that does, however, is that we likely will start seeing hard drives actually included under the NVMe specification. So you could expect spinning mechanical disks to work on the NVMe protocol, which doesn't mean they're gonna get faster, which just means that you have another way of operating with them rather than having to have SATA. You can use it through the NVMe protocol. And I don't know what the protocol is gonna be for Stadia much longer, but AT&T is gonna try to find ways, exploring ways to enhance their network for Stadia and offering a six month Stadia Pro subscription if you go with AT&T, which is just, Amazing, this is great to see Stadia working on the thing that is not the reason that people don't use their service. The fundamental difference between what people want and what Stadia is delivering, they're gonna address it by just saying, hey, it's at and fault. Hopefully they can give us better service. Also, 18 months after launch, Google Stadia now works on Android TV, which just in case you didn't know, Android TV is made by Google and Google makes Google Stadia and it took them 18 months to get them to work together. Also, the fact that it took 18 months for them to implement a, a search, search feature, feature on Stadia, Stadia for video, video games. games. <laughs> it's amazing, you see all the support for Android TV for Stadia. 
Google continuing to just ignore what people are saying and just ignore the fact that things like GeForce Now and xCloud have a much better business model and a much better consumer oriented way of doing things than Stadia where it's like, hey, you have to buy a game and then you can stream it anywhere. But as soon as we shut it down, because you know we're going to shut Stadia down, you don't get the game anymore. Whereas with GeForce Now, if you buy the game, hey, you still get to use it because you bought it on Steam. And if you get an RTX 3080 Ti, well, then you'll be able to use it. Just Google not caring about what consumers want. And crypto not caring about what you want because it's time for the Crypto Stonks update. Bitcoin going down 8%, crossing to almost under $30,000 at one point, sitting near $33,000. Is it is it the end? Are we at the end? Are we at the tail end? Or is this like the last gas before it rallies to a million dollars? Who, who knows these things? Not me. But El Salvador wants to be involved in this volatility with them being the first country that's going to work on having Bitcoin accepted as legal tender. And Ethereum, not quite there, also down 8.3% on the day to about $2,500. Dogecoin also down 8%. But stunks, the meme stunks. GameStop closing in at over $300. This is the first time in like, I think months it's done this, which GameStop going up. The stunks are back, baby. AMC not really moving a whole lot, closing at $55 and BlackBerry also again up two cents on the day. The stunks not really doing much besides GameStop and cryptos just having a hard knock life. But if you are having a hard knock life on your M1 laptops, well, there's some good news because a new macOS update might fix the SSDware issue that was happening on some of the M1 Macs on Apple. The update should fix the higher than expected wear rate on the SSDs that are happening with M1 because of weird caching issues it's having from the RAM to the SSD, which was causing the chip to use the SSD more frequently than it should have. And that should no longer be the case. So your Apple laptop can last as long as you jolly well like it to. And I jolly well like like my things that I buy to appreciate in value. And Elgato seems to be doing that with their Stream Decks, with them launching Stream Deck 5.0 update. Update, update, update to the app, update. It makes sense. Stream Deck 5.0 brings in a whole bunch of stuff, including a new music library, as well as a new plugin store so that you can have access to copyright free music for your streams, as well as all of these apps that you would want to use with your Stream Deck now being in a curated library for you. Corsair slash Elgato bringing more good things to the consumer. You love to see it. But the internet couldn't bring anything to you yesterday. There was a CDN outage that affected a large portion of the internet, things like Twitch, Reddit, Pinterest, GitHub, all of them went down because of the global CDN disruption, which made it so that people couldn't use the internet for a little bit, but I was sleeping. So I had no idea this happened. And when I woke up, everything was fine. And I just read on Twitter about how the internet was down. What a time to be alive, folks. And what a time for you to you think GPU sales would be down like the internet was. Reverse segue going back there because I messed up the intro. Anyways, GPU sales are actually up 39% in 2020. You thought it would be down because you couldn't get your hands on one. Did you ever think that crypto miners were buying up all of them? And so you, that's why. And so sales would be high. And like NVIDIA was saying, it's an unprecedented demand issue. It's not a supply issue. All right. They sold more than they've ever sold before and they still can't keep up. No word on what percentage of the sales obviously went to crypto farms. And that was just me kind of making fun of the general sentiment that is out there in the ether of PC world. But it's the, they're making money. So they don't really they're selling out of everything that they have. And if they could make more to sell, they would make more to sell. It's, it's pretty it's pretty good economics for Nvidia and AMD right now. And I don't know if these economics make sense, but the play date from Panic has now been fully unveiled. The price is now there and pre-orders are gonna start happening in July. I don't understand this $179 handheld console. It's it's a weird looking thing. That's on its like stereo dock that gives you extra speakers. You can wind it up to charge it, but it can also be charged on that dock. And it's just a kind of retro looking game pad. I, I don't get this. I don't understand why people would pay for this. It's $180. It's gonna have a whole bunch of indie titles on them that are gonna be exclusives. Playdate is calling this season one for their games list. I just, don't personally understand this device. Are you excited about the play date? Let me know in the comments. It seems to be a big thing, but it feels so like something that I, I don't know. You would find at like a cheap gift store. 
Maybe that's just on me and I need to change my perspective. But Nocta was changing their perception when it comes to their company because you think of their brown and tan fans. No, 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 no. You can't think of Nocta that way anymore because they don't have fans anymore. The NHP1 passive heatsink has shown up on Newegg for $100. It is a big behemoth boy. It is no longer on Newegg. It doesn't look like Noctua meant to have that go public, but the passive heatsink that we've been expected from them should be rolling out sometime soon. And it's just a chonkers, hunch bucks but no brown and tan fans. And no CUDA course from the people who bought the M15R5 Alienware stuff. We talked about this in the last episode of Hot News about how Alienware was shipping out these RTX 3070 GPUs with fewer CUDA cores enabled than there otherwise should have been. There's an update on the story where Jared's tech actually reached out to Dell and he got both responses from them. Number one, that this is intentional and this is just, they're doing it so you get the best performance and heating and everything that you could possibly spin doctor it to make it sound like a positive of them shipping you something that you paid for, but they're not going to fully let you get. But then he also got confirmation on the other end that it was a mistake and that they're going to be fixing it and it shouldn't have happened and there will be a vBIOS update for it. So good job, Dell. I'm proud of you continuing to just be really bad at your PR and being really bad at shipping things to people and having them pay for things that they actually don't get because you force people on warranty services that you, you just kind of hide when you're purchasing them and you make them pay it for it for months. And then you also ship RTX 3070s that don't have the full GPU power that they otherwise could have. Good job, Dell. I'm proud of you. Good, good capitalism right there. And Jensen thinks it's bad capitalism for AMD to start shipping ray tracing phones. Puh, disgusting. Okay, do you, you want to know what the CEO of NVIDIA has to say about this? Ray tracing games are quite large, to be honest. The data set is quite large and there will be a time for it. When the time is right, we might consider it. So NVIDIA not interested in getting into the smartphone ray tracing world, AMD just doing it as a marketing stunt. It's not gonna be worth anything. How, how could you believe that? And how could you believe that Dell was gonna sell you anything that was you thought was worthwhile? Go check out last week's episode of Hot News where we go more in depth on that Alienware story. I'll see you in tomorrow's episodes, friends. Bye, words.